Looking for trading partners. Europeans gain a foothold in Asia. Once Vasco da Gama had reached India and returned with items that made him and the government quite wealthy, other Portuguese traders quickly followed in his path. Even though the ships that sailed that they sailed in were small in both size and number, the firepower that they contained was unmatched in the early 1500s. The superior firepower allowed them to win control of the rich Indian Ocean spice trade and to build a trading empire in Asia. While they were unable to defeat the powerful Mughal Empire uh, led by Muslims in much of India, there were parts of southern India that were still under the control of local princes, and the Portuguese promised to protect them from other European powers. Portuguese leaders hoped to use this foothold in southern India as a way to turn the Indian Ocean into a Portuguese lake and eventually move on to defeat the Muslims. In 1510, 13 years after the arrival of Vasco da Gama, the Portuguese sealed the island of Goa off the west coast of India and made it their primary military and trading base. The Portuguese leader, Alfonso de Albuquerque, burned towns along the Indian coast and crushed Muslim fleets at sea. In 1511, the Portuguese took control of the East Indies port city of Malacca along the valuable Strait of Malacca and killed all of the Muslim inhabitants of the city. Within 50 years, they had built a series of military and trading outposts or distant areas under their control around the Indian Ocean, stretching from East Africa to India. For most of the 1500s, the Portuguese controlled the spice trade between Europe and Asia. While the Portuguese may have been a force to be reckoned with on the water, their ability to carry that strength very far inland was lacking. When faced with stronger empires in India and China, they asked for permission to trade and therefore remained on the fringes of trade with Asia. However, the intolerance of the Portuguese religious missionaries fueled resentment of those they came in contact with. In addition to what they had done to the Muslim fleets on the high seas, they attacked Muslims further on land, destroyed Hindu temples, and introduced the Middle Ages-driven Inquisition, which was an effort to prove converts to Christianity and Catholicism. They even sank ships of Muslim pilgrims, making their way to Mecca. Again, though these actions had very little impact on the trade between Asian nations, as they simply bypassed Portuguese control areas or traded with other European nations. By the end of the 1500s, the Portuguese had lost much of their trading power, and now other nations tried to take control of the valuable spice trade. The first nation to step forward and try to replace the Portuguese was another tiny nation, the Netherlands. The Dutch, the people who lived in the northern area of the Netherlands, broke free of the control of Spain, who controlled them in 1581, and quickly set their sights on competing with Portugal. The return of a ship filled with pepper, cloves, and other spices from Asia in 1599 began a frenzy of build-up in the shipping industry. Because of the quality of their warships and trading vessels, the Dutch quickly became the leaders in European trade. They used this power to set up trading outposts and colonies, including a settlement at Cape Town, the major trading port at the Cape of Good Hope in southern Africa. The Dutch transformed overseas trade by shifting control for the trade from the government to private businesses. The Dutch East India Company was formed in 1602 among wealthy merchants. Their company had the ability to form armies, wage war, negotiate peace treaties, and even govern overseas territory as if it were a government. In 1641, the Dutch East India Company captured Malacca, 
from the Portuguese, began trading with China, and established a monopoly or sole trading privileges with the Spice Islands, controlling the trade between there and Europe, as well as the local trade routes. While the Dutch used military force to control their trading empire, just as the Portuguese had, they emphasized having a positive relationship with local rulers, which the Portuguese had not. Many Dutch merchants married Asian women. By the 1700s, the growth of the English and French as trading nations led to a decline of Dutch trading power. Still, the change that they made in taking the responsibility for running the trading system away from governments gave merchants in other nations an example to follow in their own businesses. Portugal's neighbor on the Iberian Peninsula, Spain, entered trade with Asia from the other direction, that instead of sailing around Africa, they sailed around South America. In 1492, Christopher Columbus had sailed west from Spain in hopes of finding a shortcut to Asia rather than having to sail around the African continent. And, as we will see, he did not discover that route, but he did set the stage for other Spanish explorers to follow. One of them was Ferdinand Magellan, who sailed around the southern tip of South America through the Strait of Magellan and into the Pacific Ocean. In 1521, he reached an archipelago, or a chain of islands, that would later be called the Philippines, in honor of Spanish King Philip II. Within 50 years, the Spanish had easily conquered and colonized the ununited and unorganized people there. As the Catholic Reformation was in high gear, Spanish priests, mostly Jesuits, were to convert the people in the Philippines to Catholicism and then used those islands as a launching pad to try to convert people in China and Japan. The Philippines became a key link in the Spanish overseas trading empire as they shipped silver from their mines in Mexico and Peru to the Philippines and then traded that silver for goods in China. This was significant because the Chinese would only take payment for their goods in gold or silver. The Chinese saw Europeans as barbarians because they lacked the civilized ways of the Chinese. Even as European interest in Chinese silks and porcelains the Ming, during the Ming Dynasty, which ruled China from 1368 to 1644, the Ming Dynasty had very little interest in anything that Europeans had to offer because the work of the Europeans was inferior to that of the Chinese. The Chinese only allowed trade at one port, Macau, near current day Guangzhou or Canton. Any trade that went on there was under the close scrutiny of members of the government and only for a certain period of time. When that time was over, the foreign ships sailed away. As soon as the traders from Portugal and Spain arrived in China, Catholic missionaries, mostly Jesuits again, followed closely behind. Because Jesuits had a broad knowledge of many subjects, the Chinese were interested in learning about Renaissance Europe from them. One priest, Matteo Ricci, made a significant impression on the Chinese by learning the Chinese language and adopting Chinese clothing. Ritchie hoped that doing this would help to convert upper-class Chinese to, co to convert to Catholicism, and that this would help the religion to spread through the rest of China. But while the Chinese were interested in looking at the maps made by Europeans and were open to the discoveries in astronomy and mathematics, they did not convert in very large numbers to Catholicism. <laughs> 